That's it. I've had it, okay? I came back to the kitchen to make potatoes and two whole episodes have gone by and I have not boiled hot oil and thrown items into it. So today is the day we do that. Welcome back to Aries Kitchen. Today we're making some more potatoes, but just a little bit more violently than we did last week. Last week, you know, that was for you. Okay, you wanted mashed potatoes, you can have them. Now it's time to deep fry. And not only is it time to deep fry, but it's time to deep fry something I've never made before. So we're pairing really hot temperatures with inexperience and hopefully that will equal deliciousness and safety. I am gonna be making croquettes, potato croquettes. Do you have to say potato? No, it's just a croquette. Not to be confused with that golf bowling mallet sport that old people play while they scowl at you while you're just trying to take a walk in the park and you're like, I don't even know what that field is for. What is even the point of that game? Where do you hit the ball? Anyway, this isn't that sport, okay? This is a potato ball that is gonna taste delicious and cheesy, hopefully, or it's a toy. Because when I was looking up different types of potatoes that people loved, supposedly, this to me looks like a toy. It's a ball and that's it. That's all the qualifications it needs to be to be a toy. It's a ball. Your food is shaped like a ball. Choose a different shape and then I won't call it a toy. You make like a potato dough and then you like put it all together and then you coat it in some stuff and you deep fry and then supposedly it's gonna just be this beautiful fried masterpiece of gooey, cheesy, crispy things. Let's look up some of the history of croquettes from this website that I did not fact check. A croquette is a small cylinder or ball slash toy of filling that has been breaded and fried. August Escoffier, a French culinary artist, created the modern form of these bundles of joy. This is biased. I don't know that it's a bundle of joy. It could be a bundle of Annoying. In France in 1898, old, although Escoffier was the founder of this classical dish, Phileas Gilbert, another widely known chef, was also involved in creating and writing down the original recipe. Drama. The word croquette is rooted in the French word croquer, or croquet, sorry, which means to crunch or to bite. Like the old people will bite you when you step on their croquet court. The crumb comes from an egg. Oh, so we do need an egg. Okay. After coming to life in France, croquet. Okay, I'm happy for you or sorry that happened. I'm not reading all that. Let's make some croquets. And then if they're good, we'll chuck them at the wall. And if they're bad, I might chuck them at the wall too. Either way, we're frying food and probably throwing some. So if that's of interest to you, welcome. Where the hell does this staircase go? So in order to make this recipe, as with all recipes, we need some ingredients. Our ingredients today, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. First and foremost, potatoes. We will be using russet potatoes, and as well as an onion. You can choose yellow or white onion. I just ordered an Instacart and got some <laughs> russet potatoes on there, but they just decided to give me the most stacked potato. Holy duck ass, look at that thing. My God, better get cooking. That thing's gonna make me act up. So sorry, we need russet potatoes. We need an onion. We need some oat flour, which I didn't have. So like a true chef, I blended oats and now I have oat flour. I blended them, I sifted them. And now here we are with a nice, beautiful thing of sifted, probably improved oat flour. We're also gonna need garlic, some uh, vegan mozzarella cheese, some full fat oat milk, some salt, some sugar, and some curry paste, which this recipe asks for red curry paste. All I had was green and it smells great. So we'll just use green. Sorry, they didn't have any at the store. All right, so we need to peel and cube our potatoes. You don't have to peel them like people I guess make this with unpeeled potatoes. To me, I feel like that's not what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go rinse these off and then get Cuban. You walk into the bathroom, you see this potato just finished washing itself, what do you do? All right, let's peel these potatoes. This is definitely the most fun part out of any potato recipe I'm learning. Just sitting here and scraping the skin off of potatoes. Last and absolutely not least, we have this potato to peel. So everybody salute. Thank you for your service. You know, like um, respectfully looking and now it's, now it's time to eat you. Life is like a cutting board of potatoes. You never know what you're gonna get. And sometimes you're really cheeked up. Isaac Newton said that. All right, I'm gonna wash these potatoes and um, Cut. 
All right. Uh, thankfully, these have been these have been washed. Uh, they took a little dive, but they're recovered. We got to get them cubed so that we can boil them, and they need to be kind of cut evenly so they cook evenly. So I'm just gonna cube them and put them in the pot as I do that. So we're gonna be making like a potato dough, a potato dough to make the croquettes because it's not, you're not gonna just like fry mashed potatoes. This is about as close as you're gonna ever get to frying mashed potatoes. All right, that is the last of our potatoes. Now we're gonna cover this in water and get to boiling them. 12 to 15 minutes it says, boil until tender, so. All right, so while the potatoes are boiling, we have to uh, dice an onion. Doesn't say how finely we want this diced, but I'm pretty sure we don't want these to be like big pieces because these are all, these are gonna get sauteed, but then they're gonna go inside of the potato balls. So I'm just gonna finely dice this onion and then we move on. All right, I found uh, our newest recruit. He's the head chef actually. He's the one who stands behind the camera telling me what to do. And he wanted just to let me know that I did a good job cutting the onions, right? Is that right? Tell him, tell him what you just told me. Bad job, you said it was good. Thin ice? You're gonna fire me? I literally just started working here. Bosses, am I right? All right, so we're gonna mince this garlic. I have a really, really specific method for this. I'm gonna take my knife. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna slam it with the knife. So a little of that. Where did it go? Where did the garlic go? Oh, there it is. So just a little bit of violence to the garlic and then we'll just get mincing. Mincing. Mince, 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 mince. What if there was a Pokemon and their only ability was mincing garlic. That would make a sick sous chef, dude. Go Garlosaur. And then he just pops out of the Pokeball and just goes and then he runs away. All right, so garlic, onion, all prepared. Now we need to get our cooktop. I gotta say, it's good to be making cooking videos again. I missed it for sure. But one thing I didn't miss, reading through literal novels. Every single time I'm trying to get to a recipe, don't care what your aunt did the first time you had her over and you showed her this potato preparation. I don't care about your aunt. She actually sounds kind of mean a little bit, a little judgy, Susan. All right, we gotta turn this on. Ooh. All right, cooktop is going. So we'll hit it with a little oil. That's probably good. Grab our spatula. And saute onions first, it says, and then we add garlic later. I think probably not to burn the garlic. So we're just gonna wanna get these translucent. Let them cook. Let them cook. I'm just talking to the onions. This is a great cooktop because it runs on propane, like a little, little canister. So you can bring it into your bed and get cooking. You could go into the bathroom, get cooking. Anywhere you might be, it's a great, unique, portable way to cook things. So my boss is back. He wanted to hang out and check on things. Uh, this is a great kitchen towel because it also doubles as a dog bed. Sharks. Our onions are done. They're actually really, really beautiful. Look at that. Something really satisfying though about just cooking onions and garlic with olive oil. It's a good way to like pretend that you know how to cook. Just do that and people will be like, whoa, that smells good. How's that smell? Want a little piece of cheese, Mr. Cheese? Yeah, let him eat, let him eat. Oh, there we go. Yummy. Once the potatoes are done, I think we strain them. Then it says, add cooked onions and garlic, curry paste, sugar, salt, mix together, and then divide potato into 10 to 12 balls. This is where the, this is where it becomes a toy. It goes from a food to a toy in this next step. You wanna play fetch with a potato ball? Okay, so I'm gonna take the potatoes off the heat now and I'm going to put them through the ricer. This is two weeks in a row that we're using the ricer. Again, if you don't have one of these, go to your local friend's house and steal it. Hopefully that works. 
If you get into a fight, I didn't say anything. It wasn't me. I didn't tell you to do that. Okay, so we have riced the potatoes. They're looking good. Where's our spatula? Where did you put it? It was in the sink. Okay, potatoes are rice. Add the cooked onions, garlic, curry paste, sugar, salt, and mix until combined. Okay, onions first. Okay, we're just gonna kind of stir this together. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Okay, onions and potato. So I think one of the more strange looking ingredients on this list in the recipe is curry paste. Like croquettes are a food that I, in looking up to make this video, I found out that there's like a lot of versions of them. There's like Spanish croquetas, there's Italian croquettes, there's Japanese croquettes. There's a lot of different preparations, which I think is super cool. I love foods that have the ability to kind of, you know, be immersed in different cuisines and stuff. But this was a recipe and it'll be linked as I always do. I thought it was like a kind of like a fast food American version of croquettes. Didn't really think curry paste was gonna be on the list, but it is. So we just gotta trust the process. Even though I have the wrong ingredient, it says red curry paste and I have green, but whatever. I think without the curry paste, maybe it would just be too bland. There's just like nothing going on as far as flavor. It's just literally potatoes and onions and garlic. I actually, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I ruined it. Mashing, combining, stirring, mixing, yada, yada, yada. So these are gonna make up the ball that we're going to bread and fry. All right, it's looking pretty good. It actually smells really good. Again, dark horse ingredient, curry paste. Never would have thought that. Have a, have a smell, smell it. it. Smells good, right? Yeah. So we have to divide this into 10 to 12 balls, which I feel like respectfully, they're gonna be kind of big. Do I have, yes I do, an ice cream scooper. This actually seems like a good tool for this. This feels like the perfect size for a croquette ball. All right, let's finish making these and then we'll look up the next step. Bunny's drinking water. Great job, Bunny. You're doing great. All right, so I'm currently trying my best to get the potato balls, open them up and fit some cheese inside while also being able to kind of close them back up. And it's proving to be pretty hard. This is like, I think technically the hardest part of the recipe right now. And I think it's because I'm using shredded cheese. So if you're gonna make this, maybe get some like blocks of cheese and then chop off little pieces that you can just stick inside because trying to fit shredded cheese inside the potatoes and then re kind of ball them is very hard, but it's working and I'm getting it done. It's just taking a while. You're just like stuffing the cheese in there and then shutting the door. Like it's a secret, right? This cheese is my secret. Don't tell anyone about it. Don't go to therapy. Don't let it out. Just keep it deep down so no one can see it and it only will affect you. Sorry, I was talking to the potato. Okay, spoiler warning. I just took a little bite of the mashed potato mixture with the curry paste and everything. Oh my God, it is so good. Whose idea was it to put curry paste in mashed potato anything? Give them a raise. Throw a croquette at that person because that is delicious. So I have high hopes for these guys, okay? They're all prepared. They're sitting here ready. We have our panko, our oat flour, our milk. I'm heating the oil back here and then I'm gonna transfer it here. We gotta get the oil to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's at 260 right now. It's almost go time. Deep fry the croquettes in frying oil, about a minute to two per side. Take them out on a wire rack, serve immediately. Immediately? Oh my God, I'm so excited. All right, we're gonna start it. So we go, the ball goes into oat flour first, then milk, then panko. We're gonna go coat it completely in oat flour. It's just like a base coat like that. Then you go milk. It was kind of weird. And then panko. And here we go. Good luck, have fun. Okay, it's not fully submerged. I'm just gonna kind of keep it moving. Maybe it should do more oil. A lot of the panko is coming off. I don't know if that's supposed to happen. I don't know if it's because it's gluten-free and everything gluten-free is a disappointment and a tragedy in some way or shape. Maybe it's because I didn't pack the crumbs on well enough. I do think I need to add more oil so it's completely submerged. Oh, that's looking good. Oh, oh boy. Look at that. So let's whip all these up and then we'll try them.
Okay, that was a hot, oily, messy journey. We're done deep frying our croquettes and we have an array here of, uh, it's just a spectrum like anything else in life. Successes and failures and everything in between. Also crumbs, uncooked cheese, there's just everything. So whatever you're into, we got it here. At Julian's Croquette Shop, you better crow bet you're gonna have a good time here. Now it's time for what's it called, where you pull it apart, so cross section, cheese pull. So this one looks pretty good. It's perfectly circular, it's like golden brown. Some of these look a little overdone. Let's do a cheese pull. Oh boy, that was pretty good for vegan cheese. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. And it's a ball, so you can play with it. I felt a crack. The thing is, it's like deceptive because it looks like something is inside of this that would hold its shape. But it's really just mashed potatoes. You could look at a croquette and be like, man, that's a ball. You could play with it, but. That's really hot. Can't play with it. It's an illusion, just like most things in life. I have a lot of feelings and things going on right now. This tastes delicious. It's like the tastiest of the potato plus crispy fried stuff, which you can never go wrong crisping and frying things, especially when there's cheese involved. It's just such a, a wonderful combination of everything. I mean, I guess you probably could play with it. Take one of the overdone ones. I could probably do 90 with this thing. All right, welcome to Croquette Baseball, where we fry them hot and we toss them hotter. Right. <gasps> that strike perfect throw, I might say so myself. Anyway, back to the food. You have to really make sure your oil temperature is on point. That's gonna make a big difference. But man, you hear that crunch? That is nice. That is really nice. I wanna try to do another cheese bowl here. Ooh, that one was good, that one was good. That one was like mm, Pinterest level almost, minus the life story. It's a great delivery service for potatoes. I'm a fan of croquettes. I'm a fan of croquettes. I still stand by this being in the food category that is also a toy, because it is a toy. I just demonstrated that with my highly scientific procedure over here. These are delicious. Like these are A tier, maybe S tier. These are like A plus. I think the reason that they wouldn't be S tier Oh, that's so good though, dude. Oh my God. You have to run out and make these today. They're so good. It's a perfect packaging system for potatoes. And then you have the curry paste, which adds a whole level of complexity to the flavor. And then the cheese and the panko. Yes, this is good. This was worth all the hours that I just spent doing it. I don't know, A plus. A plus croquettes, A plus. I, uh, I underestimated you. And next time I'm gonna do my best to estimate you. Also, I don't know why I'm talking to a potato, but that's where we are today. I hope you get to try this because it is delicious. I have two giveaways today. I have the one I smashed with my hand and then I have the wall croquette. Um, comment down below and I'll pick two lucky winners to package those puppies into an envelope and get them on, send them your way. Thanks for watching another episode of Aries Kitchen as we delve deep into the world of potatoes and potato meals and potato theories and history and science and potato math. I'll see you next week, hopefully for something a little bit more chill. Also, happy Cinco de Mayo. Bye now. Trust the process and don't have any sudden movements. Okay, we're working with hot oil here.